All right, all right. What's up, everybody? How's it going? Happy Halloween to y'all. I hope you guys are having a fantastic Halloween so far. If you're celebrating Halloween, I know a lot of you guys are uh, out of country, you know, but in uh, here in the U.S., it's Halloween, and it's one of my favorite times of the year. It's a spooky time, you know? It's a super scary time. And it's a good excuse to dress up. Um, you know, I pulled together what I could, which was basically just this shirt right here, all right? Um, if, if you don't know who I am, you know, I've heard a lot of comments that I look like one particular video game character, so I was like, you know what? I'm just going to grab what I got in my closet and put this on. That's right. I'm I'm Joseph Seed from Far Cry. Um, I've heard it enough. You know, I've heard enough comments about it. So I was like, you know what? Screw it. Let's just let's just go for it. Um, <laughs> but if you guys are just joining me today and if you're watching this video when it's not live, well, here's what we're doing. Um, I'm running this render contest. It's called Parallel Dimensions. And we got, uh, we're putting together a little environment, something like this. This is what I created on the very first stream. Um, this is a, in, this is a master class in creating environments in 3D. So this is some concept art that I put together with you guys on the first stream in volume one. We're on volume four. And for volume four, what we're doing today, we're putting together, um, all of our foreground stuff. So we have our swamp. We did our swamp in um, volume two. And we in volume three, we did the volcano. And today we're doing the huts. We're doing the trees in the foreground. We're gonna do um, the trees in the midground. We're gonna do the huts on the left side here. And we're gonna add a little bit more detail um, you know, to our foreground with some stumps and whatnot. And maybe some shrubbery and some general brush um, going on. So that is that is the plan for today, is to add a bit more detail and actually tell a story with our environment, to tell a story with our foreground. Um, and, and really, you want to tell a story throughout the whole thing. But you want to be thinking, like, what is the story in the piece of art that you're creating? I think art is always better when it's when there's story involved, even if it's just a picture. Um, there's, there's more depth added to the whole thing, and your mind actually goes off and starts coming up with different characters, different ideas. So that's our goal today is to fill out the foreground with a bunch of detail in order to tell a story of what the heck is going on here. And that could be up to everybody, you know, whatever you guys want to, you know, want to feel like this story tells here. Um, so, man, there's a, there's a lot. There's a lot to talk about. I took notes. There's so much to talk about. I took notes. Okay, so. If you guys don't know what the heck is going on here, we're again, we're doing an environment contest and it's actually sponsored by PNY and NVIDIA. Um, they reached out and they're like, hey, we want to give out some awesome prizes. Um, so there's some really cool stuff that you guys can win. Like the, the first place prize is a uh, Quadro RTX 4000 graphics card. And they sent me a Quadro and I'm, I'm loving it. I'm absolutely loving it and it allows me to do larger scenes like this. So super cool but the idea here is to basically if you go to the landing page which there's a link in the description the PNY landing page you basically um, you know the idea is to download a template file which looks something like this right here okay um, and you're supposed to fill out the environment however you like and I'm gonna choose the top 20 submissions and put them together into an awesome audio visual render montage with some cool music and, um, you know, of those 20, I will choose the top three. Now, U.S. prizes, you can only win prizes if you're in the U.S., um, but that's totally okay because if you win as well in your international, I'm going to be sending you guys some of my uh, professional photography art prints. Um, if you guys know, I'm a photographer. I shoot film and digital and uh, I have a print store. It's called noisegreenandlight.com. There's a link in the description below as well. Um, so, yeah, I just want to make it worth your guys' while. But really, at the end of the day, we're here to learn and make something awesome together. Okay, so let's let's take a look at these notes here. How how you guys doing? It's been a week since we've been hanging out. Is everyone doing okay? Thumbs up if you're excited for Halloween, if you're excited for this stream. Or just give me a thumbs up if you're watching and having a good time. So, let's see. 
yeah, I'm excited to jump into this. It's gonna be a it's gonna be a good one. We got Nathan Graham Davis in the house, an awesome writer. A couple streams ago, I did a, a VFX shot for Nathan for his uh his writing uh series that he's got going on, where he's gonna write a whole feature, and he's gonna guide you guys through the process. It's basically like what this is, but for writing. Um, and he's doing one every week. So shout outs to Nathan, Arnie. Thanks for the super chat. Appreciate you. Have I had Ren on? You want to hear his Norwegian? I don't know what that is. But, um, oh, he speaks Norwegian. Maybe. Maybe he does. Um, I have not had Ren on, but I really want to. I really, really want to. Um, he lives close by. So maybe we can get Ren on at some point. Yeah, yeah. What's up, Apex? You are a Blender artist, but you're still going to learn. Yes, that's the whole point, guys. It doesn't matter what program you use. The idea is that you can take all of these concepts um, and ideas and apply them to your own program. And I think you actually get a little bit better. You level up a little bit more when you do that because you figure it out for yourself. Um, and really, the only way to learn is by doing. That's not the only way, but it's the best way. Learn by doing. So that's the whole point of us meeting here on Saturday is to spend time creating some awesome stuff together. Uh, awesome to awesome to see you guys in the chat here. Yeah, it's been a it's been a good week. Um, the corridor guys have been in Texas shooting, but we've been back working on a Birdemic, uh, remaking the the VFX of Birdemic, which is insane, absolutely insane. Um. All right, so this is going to be an exciting stream, a very, very interesting stream. I'm going to do something I've never done before, um, which is, you know, if you guys if you guys don't know, so this stream specifically today is sponsored by Parsec, and Parsec is a remote desktop application that allows you to remote in to, you know. Your, maybe your work computer. So right now, like my corridor computer is, you know, 30 minutes away in downtown Los Angeles, right? And if I need to get on that computer, instead of driving all the way down there, I can just parsec in. So it's really cool though, because they actually reached out to me after I've been using their software and their program. Um, so it was, it was awesome. It's a really cool service. Let me just show you guys real quick. And I'm going to be using Parsec on today's stream to be able to hop into my work computer to grab files and bring them back um, over here today. So let me just pull this up for y'all. Yeah, I love their UI. I love their, their whole experience. Now, you can actually get it for free, but they do offer a $10 a month. You actually save 20, uh, 20% if you sign up for a year. And it's called Parsec Warp. And the idea with Warp is like, you get uh, dual monitor support, so you can do two monitors. It actually has like a legit um, uh, like 444 color mode, so you're actually able to um, get the truest amount of color with your monitor, right? And also, it's set up for the tablet, which if you guys know, I'm on a tablet all the time, so it has pressure sensitivity and tilt support and all that good stuff. It's an amazing service. So, I got some files that are on my work computer that I need to get onto my home computer right here, okay? So I just wanna show you guys how easy this is. And Christian, hey, thanks for the super chat. Appreciate you, man. Um, it's gonna be exciting. It's gonna be a good one. So really all I have to do, these are all the different computers that, you know, as long as you're logged into your Parsec account, um, you can hop in to any computer. So this is my work computer. Boom, and I am, into my work computer. It's as easy as that. Um, super low, it's basically zero latency. You're in here um, and you'll forget that you're on another computer. It's that easy um, and it works that well. So like I said, you get the, the double monitor situation going. Um, let's see. So you go here and you grab your second screen and you can just pop this over. Obviously you guys, you don't see my second screen because you know, I'm only streaming one screen, but you got access to that. Um, and then your your prefer 444 color, boom, you just want to check that on and it'll it'll update so that you're getting the, the purest um, color quality. So it's pixel per pixel color. 
Um, and uh, yeah, so here's what we're gonna do. Let's go full screen on this, so we're in. And I wanna pull out a couple models here. So I'm in Cinema 4D on my work computer. So if you were at Corridor right now, you'd see my computer like ghosting on like this, which is super cool. So I have these like huts, right? And originally, you know, I had these Mongolian yurts that I was going for in the concept art, but the more I researched it, the more I realized if you lived in a swamp, the the water level is going to rise and lower depending on the time of year, depending on the rainfall. So you'd probably be living in something like this where you know, you have the ability to still stay dry because your house is lifted off the ground. So I grabbed a couple different uh couple different models here. Let me see. Let me pull up um Here we go. So we got this guy. Little tiny hut. We got this guy here. It's a little bit bigger, right? And these are these are pretty high quality, you know, they come in different levels of, of detail. So we only need it for like a medium shot, a wide shot, and they'll be off in the distance. And then you have like this guy here, which is like the main kind of structure. So I'm going to be pulling these four from my work computer onto my home computer because I'm parsecced into my work computer right now. So I'll grab these four. They're on my desktop right here so I want to make sure they are in um, the VFX folder here so I'll pull this over grab my second screen in Parsec pop it over to the right and just make sure that these files are in the VFX materials I'll grab this over boom so now Let's see, let's go windowed here, close this. If I disconnect, right, back on my home computer, I will have access in VFX materials to this swamp here, the Reed Hut Swamp. So I'm going to go ahead and drag these guys in, open them up. Maybe I need to relink some textures. But basically, you just saw that I was able to go into my work computer and come back into Cinema 4D on my personal computer um, and grab some files with Parsec Warp. It is the best. I love it so much. <laughs> so smooth. Yeah. Um, so the models, yeah, I got these from Turbo Squid. These are some Turbo Squid models. They're like 10 bucks a piece, 15 bucks a piece. And I thought they actually worked perfect for this thing. So let me go ahead and, and drop these guys in. And then we're gonna go back, we're gonna parsec back into the work computer and grab some Mega Scans models, come back in. We're gonna be going back and forth throughout the entire stream because I, I really wanna show you guys how awesome this, um, this software is. Um, you know, parsec is just super seamless. And I learned about it actually from Andre Lebrov. And, uh, I mean, that dude's just a beast. You know, he uses Parsec. He loves Parsec. I just love their UI. It's a good time. All right, so let's go ahead and um, let's render our scene and see what the heck we got. And we'll bring these huts in and see if we can't get, like, a general placement um, of everything here. So it's doing its thing, loading. We got quite a few things going on. I'm probably going to hide some stuff. Because we really don't need to see the background. I just want to see my foreground. Boom. Looking awesome. And once we get our foreground um, looking nice, I'm probably going to go in and add a bit of sky uh, to this guy here as well. Winbush, what's up, dude? What is going on? Happy Halloween to you, Winbush. Heck yeah, dude. We're doing a 3D environment, building this thing out. All right, so let's go ahead and bring in these models. I'm gonna go ahead and merge the projects. Here we go, ah, ton of folders. 
I'm doing a video on folder management later this year. It'll probably be a Christmas, um, it'll be a Christmas video because we got to be able to access our files as quickly as possible. Here we go. Boom. So I'll hop out of camera view, pause my my render there, and we'll just bring these guys in and make sure they're looking nice. So that size is about correct. Um, IT Burian, <laughs> I don't know if I said that right. Uh, thanks for the super chat, man. I appreciate you very, very much. Just want to say I'm inspired by your work uh, with C4D. I'm rendering right now as I type this, so my CPU is screaming. Do you have any advice for someone looking uh, for work in the VFX industry? Man, so if you guys are trying to get work in the VFX industry, I think the first place to start, at least I can only speak about my um, experience and I got started as a freelancer so I started doing freelance work for friends and just really nurturing those relationships and making sure that those relationships are as solid as possible um, because really when you're doing business with someone it comes down to the relationship right so the, the more work you do for that person they'll come back to you with other work and you'll they'll you know tell other people about you and it'll just kind of grow over time, word of mouth that, hey, this guy rocks, he does good work, and you'll keep getting freelance jobs, and then you'll eventually get to a point where you can put to, put a reel together. Now, if you want to fast track that reel, you can also do some VFX for yourself. Make your own videos, which is totally what I did. Um, early YouTube, you know, I started doing stuff like Carbon Warfare, Carbon Warfare 2, the Killzone video, and if, if I wanted to, you know, if I wanted to get into a VFX house, I could just package all the stuff that I put together, maybe some stuff I did for clients, package together into a reel and maybe you send that around and it's all just word of mouth and, and relationships. So, um, you know, you'll get into certain studios, do uh, apply to certain studios and they'll see your work and be like, yo, this guy does good work. It all comes down to the work. You are only as good. Well, that's not true. Um, when you're getting hired at a VFX place, uh, they look at your work first and then they're like, the second thing is, Hey, is this guy cool? Can I talk with this person? Um, you know, are they nice? And then that'll get you in. So just keep it up. Also persistence. You got to stay, stay focused um, and keep at it. That's really the main thing is to keep at it. So we can see here the materials are not, they're not synced up. So I'm going to just going to merge the rest of these and then we'll sync the materials at the end. So we'll bring in these huts. Obviously, this one's too tiny. And I'm really just judging this off of the doorway. Let's see, where are you? So that's why I have a person in every scene, or if this person wasn't here, rather, I'd be making a person figure and whoop, scaling it up so that you know they'd fit through this little door right there. They're probably about the same size, these two. All right, let's do the others. This one's super tiny as well. Definitely scale that guy up. And you just want to get the opening about right. That feels good. And lastly, our last guy here. And we're gathering all of our materials so that we can place these in a really unique way. And this is just the prep you got to do before you bring this stuff in. So I think that's about good size wise on that one. So we got like four huts here that I think will be really, really cool to place into our scene. They're going to take the place of these yurts that you guys are seeing here.
Nice. Okay, so yeah, uh, Winbush says that you started as an intern and worked your way up. You made a lot of good contacts that way as well. Absolutely. Yeah, like I said, I can only speak to my experience. So it's cool that Winbush, you have a second, you know, a different side of that, you know, a different way to get into the industry. So everyone has got their story um, and their way of doing things. I think it's super awesome. So yeah, definitely. Like if you guys can intern at a place, that's that might be an even better route, <laughs> you know, as long as you're doing VFX and you're in the place where you want to be, that's, that's the best combo. All right. So I'm saving out iterations here because I, I want to make sure that I have different versions of my project file. I don't want to lose any sort of data. All right. Let's go ahead and relink these textures here. Okay. So the best way to do this, for some reason, the, the, the relinking method, the batch relinking in cinema doesn't really work for me. So I got to do this thing by hand. Um, so this is hut 001. We're going for logs base color two. Cool. And luckily, the path directory stays the same. And this is uh, the same deal. But now we're looking for the wood, dark wood texture. There it is. And you're just quickly going through all this and making sure that you don't go too fast and screw things up. Obviously, Octane crashed, it looks like. Let's see if it can revive itself. Usually when it crashes here, it's, it's done for. But we'll relink these textures and then we'll parsec back in and grab some Megascans assets. Um, we'll favorite some and then we'll download them here on our end. It's just a way to, to show you guys how easy it is to parsec in. So let's keep going. This is 01 roof base color. And the thing is, actually, I can even do this faster. You don't have to even select the right one because the file name has the right name. All you have to do is open it or just hit enter. And it's going to know exactly the right one. And this is just the process, guys. This is how it goes. So this is 04. And just the note, I've always been saying this, but if you guys have any black and white material textures here, make sure that those are set to float. It's going to save you a lot of VRAM um, in the long run, especially when your scene is built out and it's pretty huge. You definitely, uh, definitely want to make sure that you're saving as much memory as possible. This one's 06. And same deal here. Awesome. Okay. So I'm saving the scene. Um, I'm going to restart cinema while we parsec back into our work computer and gather some, uh, some mega scans, textures and assets. So this, this should be good. We'll place these when we come back. So I'm going to go ahead and close this. Um, uh, yes, please. All right, we'll restart cinema and I'm going to parsec back into my work computer and open up bridge and let's favorite some assets here so we can actually, um, you know, pull them back on the main computer 
but I want to show you guys how easy this really is. Now this might be pulled up on the second screen, so what's the hotkey? Control Shift. Oh wait. Oh no, there it is. All right, all right. So if I look here, there's some there's some swampy tree stumps, and there's some, you know, some dilapidated old trees here in the background. So I'm definitely going to want to grab some broken down trees, some, you know, scraggly branches here, and some stumps. That's going to be my first, first little bit here. Eric, yo, thank you for the super chat. Happy Halloween to you, Eric. Um, not even a message. Don't even have a message. You're just like, yo, here you go, man. I appreciate you. Thank you. Bradley, okay, so you said if you press Window Asset Inspector, you can relink all the textures at once. Um, interesting, interesting. Okay, so let me let me go back in here. Um, make sure Cinema's opening on my end. Awesome. I'll check that out in a minute. Sotomonte, okay, so Sotomonte is our moderator um, here in the chat, as well as the uh, the Discord server for all of this learning that we're doing together. Uh, he says, Clint, what percent of the project do you think you have done? Um, I'm probably 60% of the way finished on mine. Also, guys, I forgot to mention. I totally forgot to mention a couple things. So, first, um, God, let me get all this crap out of the way. Parsec back in. All right. Um, so I completely forgot to mention that the due date for the Parallel Dimensions submission process, it got extended. Originally, it was supposed to be like midnight November 1st, basically November 2nd, um, which is on Monday. But it got extended to November 6th. So if you guys are working on this, um, on this contest with me and you're putting together you know, your awesome environment, you have until November 6th, okay? If you go to the link in the description, it's the PNY landing page. If you scroll all the way down, you'll see a timer counting down to, you know, the final submission. It got updated, all right? So you have more time. Take the time to make your render awesome. Also, there's a 100 megabyte limit on the the file you can upload. So if, you're, if your render is too large, you also need to include your project file. If it's too large, then um, what you can do is upload it to Google Drive and then just upload like a readme file with the links to the download to your render and your project file on the PNY landing page. So you can kind of cheat it a little bit, get around it. Um, but yeah, no, that's that's big news. Big news. You guys have a, an extension on the timetable here. That's because originally I said it was the sixth and then it kind of went back to the second. So I was like, eh, screw it. It's going to be the sixth. All right. I've been learning a lot throughout the process. All right, so I'm parsec into my work computer at Corridor, and I'm gonna just favorite some assets here um, for our foreground, okay? And Megascans is basically the best thing ever. Um, you know, they got a lot of good stuff here. They're constantly updating all their, all their stuff and their assets. But we want trees, so I'm just gonna type in tree. And we'll go to 3D assets. And we'll just scroll down and see what we got here. Um, they have some really good, like, complete tree stumps. Like, ooh, this stuff is good. Okay, this Thai beach branch. I'm going to favorite that. So I'm going to just go through and favorite the ones that I think will really help us here. Here is a great one. This tree stump, super classic. The reason I'm not going for the, any of these other ones is because they're cut off at the top. I want the full deal. You see how this is connected? So I'm going to favorite that one. I'm going to keep going down here. Here's another example of something that could totally work for us. Um, this one could too, but it's a little it's a little much, you know? I don't know. Not a little much. It's, it's a little little. <laughs> it's not enough. This one's cool. This mossy log, I like that. And you can always unfavorite stuff, you know. You don't. You can't go too far. 
This one's good. This one's totally awesome. Um, this one's fine. This one's great. And basically, you know, I'm going for, you know, this kind of vibe here. The more branches that come off of these, the better. Um, this guy's great. This kind of stuff, you know, so I'm looking for some big tree stumps with some with a large base to it and a lot of uh, like offshoots, a lot of dead offshoots, as well as these trees back here. I know they have like three trees, like full trees, but they're dead, which is exactly what we want. Like this right here, this dead tree, boom, we want that, absolutely. This granite rock assembly, why not? That's pretty sweet. Here's a free asset, broken stump. Ah, uh, here we go. This is like all your craggly branches and stuff. I dig all that. Here is a fallen tree. I'm gonna, I'm gonna get that. I'm gonna get that. Here's another broken tree, another burnt tree, another fallen tree. Like, this is all really good stuff. The dead branches pack. Yes, please. Ooh, look at that dead tree. That thing is perfect. Another perfect dead tree there. And that might just do it. Um, I want to make sure I didn't miss anything, though. This is pretty sweet. This dry root. They just have so much stuff. This is a cool tree stump. I like that broken branch, that's nice. And that's it, so that's everything you type in tree on Mega Scans and they got it all. Fantastic. And if you guys forgot, yes, I am parsected in to my work computer, but it's so seamless, I legit forget that I'm in my work computer. <laughs> Um, yeah, anything else you guys said? Maybe some rocks? Um, oh, what's up, Casey? Yo, Casey Edwards in the house. Shout out to Casey Edwards. Happy Halloween to you, man. Hope to see you tonight. Be a good time. I hope you enjoy your walk. Casey is an, is an amazing composer. I've worked with him for a very long time now. I think the Dead Island video I did on this channel was the first video I did with Casey. Um, and he kills it, man. He just freaking kills it. I will be working with you for as long as I can. Hopefully until we're both like 90 years old, eating extra sharp cheddar cheese out of our coat pockets. It'll be a good time. Matthew Mills up in here? What's up? Heck yeah. All right. So we favorited some assets. Let's hop out of Parsec. Whoop. And we're back into my actual work computer here. I love how seamless that is. Super helpful. It literally saved us during this pandemic. So we were able to parsec into our work computers and like knock stuff out while we're at home. Um, it really is a game changer. They also have a Teams version as well, where you can do like better work as teams together through Parsec. Um, and it's got a lot of like um, privacy features and stuff and allows people to to access different computers in the network so I can access any any different person's computer in the studio um, so if you need to grab a file or something you can do it super easy um, but okay yeah let's uh, let's get this going so we have our huts and let's open up mega scans on my home computer we can see, we're gonna download these. If we go to favorites, you can see that everything here is favorited over. I believe that, is that everything? I feel like we're missing some. 3D assets. Here we go, yeah, this is everything.
So some of these I already have, like this this tree, but I'm gonna go ahead and download some of these ones that I don't have. And make sure my download settings are correct. So you definitely wanna download the 8K version, but you can export a lower quality version. I'm gonna grab some of these other level of details here because I don't need like the fullest detail if it's gonna be off in the background. And we can go to global download settings and bridge to make sure that that's the case. It's all transferred over. So let's go ahead and download that. We'll download these guys. Hopefully it doesn't wreck the stream, but we'll see. All right, that should do it. Sweet. So what are we building? Anyone who's just joining, um, we are creating out this environment here. This is concept art that I created in uh, volume one of the environment masterclass about three weeks ago. And we are basing our render off of this concept art that we created. Um, in volume two of the masterclass, we focused on the ground plane. In volume three, which was last week, we focused on the volcano. And this week, we're focusing on the foreground and adding detail in our foreground. Um, so let's go back into cinema. Let's render and see what we can see. Wait. So it looks like we just need to relink this last texture. It might be the normal that didn't come through. What's going on here? Time to do some problem solving. And it looks like maybe I just need to reload Octane. What is going on here? So I'll try soloing it. And it looks like there's an issue with this material all right so we just got to load these guys it looks like hut 01 so we'll go in and grab those materials super easy And again, I got these from Turbo Squid. They were like 10, 15 bucks each. Really nice uh, models here. They all come in different levels of detail. Boom. All right. Awesome. So we got our huts. Um, let's go ahead and adjust. We're gonna we're gonna adjust some color here, but let's place these huts and then we'll download those mega scans um, assets and make sure they work correctly. So let's hop in to our actual camera view and see what we can see here.
And again, we're going for this look here with some buildings on the right and some buildings on the left. All right. So let's see what we can do. So one thing actually we can do that help us place things is we can actually go into option and uncheck the check camera option, which is super confusing. Um, and hop out of camera and we're actually able to you know move things around our scene and it'll appear in the render view but we you know it doesn't it it's not a one-to-one -one, uh, recreation of what we're seeing in the viewport so that helps move things around we get a better angle on all this stuff now this big building I'm thinking can be like again if we're going for this you have a building in the foreground a building in the midground or kind of background of these three at least and then there's like this one here which is a bigger one so we can have kind of like a steeple effect going with our buildings you just want to clearly define the the silhouette of this stuff when you're placing objects you want to see what the heck it is if you can't tell what it is then it's kind of pointless why is it in the scene um, so we want to orient the objects in a way that best describes that object okay now one thing I'm going to do to help us with the render is I'm just going to I'm going to lose the fog here. Um Let's see. We can lose where would you be? Geometry and fog. We'll lose the fog. It's going to help speed up our render. We can also lose the smoke cards as well that we created uh last week. Yeah, Marius, you just watched the Halloween VFX artist react. That's great. That's fantastic, man. I thought it turned out really good. I watched the thing again after uh, after doing that episode, and it was God, it was so good, so good. All right, enough enough chit chat. But you know, honestly, let's be honest. That's the whole point of this. We're just chit chatting the whole time. Let's play some huts. All right. So I'm just going to lay it out here so we can like see what these things look like. And I'm going to get rid of the mountain just for a second because where are you? Background mountain. Just so I can see a little bit easier what we're working with here. And then we'll put lights inside of these huts too. Very nice, very, very nice. So let's orient these things around and find the best looking angle for these things. So, I mean, definitely like a three quarter angle is gonna be nicest. It's a matter of like, you know, what side looks the best. Um, I can open this up a little bit more. Like, I love that crisscross pattern here on the roof. I think that looks really nice. Maybe we grab this little tiny hut right here and we bring this guy into the foreground. So that'll kind of take the place of this yurt here. And we'll orient this so that the, the light is just coming out like that. Awesome. And we have this background guy, which might be like this dude right here. And this guy could actually be up on like a pile of rocks or something. Or we could just make it taller, just straight up make it taller. But you see what I'm saying about the silhouette, you know, like I want to get the silhouette of this guy in the foreground looking nice. Um, 
and I want to be able to see this guy. I want to see all three of these clearly. So I'm positioning them in a way that that's possible. So you can see this one has like an overhang, but you're not seeing it because of this guy in the background. So we need to move that maybe down a little bit or something. And then this big house can maybe come up a little bit and be scaled up. And the foreground guy can come forward so that we see its silhouette a bit better. And we'll bring our mountain back in because that's also very telling as well. We don't want to block too much of that. Now, you can see how we lose this guy a little bit into that mountain, but I think that's going to be okay because the um, the fog is going to help break that up. So maybe if I bring the fog back in to just give you an example. The fog is basically like a gradient that separates and it adds depth. So we can see here that this, this little hut stands out a little bit more. We still have some adjustments to make with the fog. I'm not loving it right now, but at least it's in there and it's going to help us break that up. So I'll, I'll hide the fog again because we move a little faster with it. But again, going after our reference, you can see how the fog really makes this guy stand out. So I want to make sure that they don't come too far into the center of the frame. It looks like it's split into thirds and this guy's creeping in a little close. So I might just take all of this and push it back a little bit. Something like that. And I'm going to add, I think, some ground and dirt that it's sitting on versus the water right here. And let's see if we go to the final frame. Does that update? Okay, it doesn't update. But if we're not going too far. I just want to make sure that that doesn't get cut off too much. But I think it's fine. Liam, thanks for the uh, thanks for the kind words. I'm I'm really happy with how this is turning out. I think it's gonna be really sweet. All right, so this guy, we can push this guy off into the background here. Because again, we're going for this vibe on the left. So these guys, I'd say, are in the foreground. These guys are in the midground. So we'll push that back. And I'm probably going to take this, um, this first hut right here and duplicate it off onto this side too. Now normally, you know, you know what, and actually I think to save memory, what I'm going to do is make an instance of this. So with that object selected, let's go up in here and let's make an instance. And the instance is a, a copy of this, but it's not extra geometry. It's just a, it's just a nice little, nice little copy. So it saves us, saves us a little bit. And you can just copy that instance around and we can make it a multi instance or a render instance for now. 
and that'll go even faster. And we can like we can scale these up just a little bit. Ooh, actually they don't scale because they are instances. But I think that's all right. We'll just move them up and down a little bit. Come out the water. Make sure they're rotated at different different um, orientations. But you just want to get a nice silhouette because they're kind of going to be blocked by the fog. And you're just going to see the silhouette on all these guys. And we're going to put lights in here too. So that's going to be an added nice little bonus. So again, I want to have a hole here. So the character's moving through toward this mountain. Um, on the left, you have some some huts, you know, like this. On the right, you have some too, and there's just a big kind of focus point for the character to move towards. So yeah, we're definitely going to add lights in these, but we're going to do that after we get them placed. I'm still not happy with the placement on all this stuff yet, but it'll get there. We just got to keep futzing with it. And we can also render a region too, so it goes a little faster. So I'll just get that little bit. So that's updating. Awesome, that's starting to feel pretty nice. I think with some fog it'll look good. Um, but let's move over to the right side and let's mess with this placement just a bit as well. So maybe that guy is on the far back and this one is uh this one's back here. Maybe this one doesn't fit. Like it definitely is the one that isn't that doesn't have a thatched roof. Yeah, 
and going back to the reference. Always checking the reference. So yeah, maybe the ground plane comes up a little bit, you know, so it's sitting a little higher. That way we're able to see a bit more of the silhouette of what this thing actually looks like. And we can we can adjust the ground plane to to come up to that level really easily. So that's not bad. Maybe I grab this guy over here and copy this dude over. Maybe we replace this guy with this guy. Because I like the... I really like the vibe from this one. Maybe something like that. And then, I don't know, maybe we have a third one. Let's see. Maybe this guy could just be like down in here. But you see what I mean here with the silhouette? You don't want these silhouettes to like blend into one house you want them to be a bit more defined even like that is a little bit better I'm liking that so now all we would have to do is bring the ground plane up to that point so the best way to do that would be to copy this over like this and I'm gonna move this we'll go ahead and rotate it just so it's not an exact copy you know something like that maybe and I'm going to let's see let's go ahead and grab this point and we're gonna do a soft selection so we'll enable soft selection and the radius will come out to like 200 maybe maybe 350 450 even um, and we'll do a bell bring this up so you kind of raise that mountain just a little bit and we can do that with with all this different uh, different little points So then we move this just back here. bring that up so it's kind of on that on that hill and we can keep just growing the selection So 
so that it looks correct. What's up, Joe? Hey, thanks for joining, man. We're building out this environment. We're adding some foreground elements, trying to make it look nice. So now this material, um, if we check the camera, we go back in. This material does not look right for some reason. Oh, I guess it's because uh, you're not getting that reflection that looks super nice. So I want to adjust that as well. Hmm. I wonder if I just went too intense with it. I could have gone too intense. So let's let's check back in with our bridge downloads and make sure we have everything going. Um, so it looks like, oh wow, how is this? Jeez, it's going slow. Oh, and I've got all this other stuff. All right, sweet. So another thing we're gonna wanna pull is some like foliage and whatnot. You know, we wanna pull some different uh, like pieces of grass so let's um just to show again the power of parsec let's parsec back in to the work computer all right we're in bridge and let's look up so now this the internet is on my second monitor so i'm gonna go second screen boom here we are and we got the internet going over here so i'll just pull this in Boom. So let's type swamp. Um, I'll just type swamp and see what kind of like uh, pieces of foliage we see. If I come in here, like this is actually pretty nice. Wow, very mossy. Um, you know, some thick grass it looks like. Lots of sticks and whatnot. A bunch of sticks. That's cool. It looks like matcha. Matcha lake going on there. Sweet. Here's a game. A level. Looks like a swampy level. So I'll pull some of this grass here. Let's go into bridge. And parsect into the work computer. Um, remote access. And let's see. Let's grab some favorites here. So I'm going to go to 3D plants. And I, would it be aquatic? Technically submerged? I mean, this is like ocean. Um, shore. Shore might be better. You know, this isn't bad. Um, sea spinach. <laughs> Definitely this stuff, this this eel grass I'm seeing a lot of. So maybe we'll we'll favorite that guy. We'll get some basket grass. And maybe we'll grab this this bull rush grass okay let's see what else we have though that's not just aquatic all right would it be weeds well, that's some like desert weed right there So 
some dead ones. We need like, uh, let's see, ground cover. I mean, we're in ground cover, right? We did this. Wild grass. Ooh, this is a good one. This is another good one. Awesome, awesome. So we'll definitely want to add these to our scene as well. So I'm going to hop out of Parsec, we'll disconnect, and we're back into the work computer. Our downloads are almost finished. Ooh, some mushrooms. Yeah, we could do some mushrooms. That sounds like a good plan. I like that. Let's uh, let's parsec back in, and we'll grab some mushrooms. We can do 3D assets. Uh, I think we just type in mushrooms. Ooh, like these ones? Yeah, we'll favorite these guys for sure. These friggin' poisonous mushrooms. We can we can scatter these around just a little bit. That could be fun. All right, we'll hop out of Parsec, disconnect back to the work computer. Um, yeah, it's I'm loving loving Parsec. Um, serious big shout outs to them. You know this this whole stream is sponsored by them. So I just want to show you guys the power of what it can truly do. Um, I've been using it a whole bunch. So definitely show them some love. You know, there's a link to Parsec right here down in the uh, description. Check it out after the stream. Open up a separate tab. Um, I'm, I know I'm gonna be using it when I'm in Georgia for Christmas. I'm gonna be parseking back into this computer right here so I can do some cool renders while I'm gone. Cause I can't bring my whole desktop to Georgia. You know, I can just bring a laptop or a Chromebook and Parsec in with that. So, yeah, super fun. Also good for games too. You can play video games on it. All right, let's hop back to the render and see what we got. So I think I want the ground plane to at least extend over here, right? So we want some like swampy water going back over on this section. So I'm going to uncheck the check camera option. We'll hop out of here. And I'll just try duplicating this again, bringing it over and seeing what that looks like. <laughs> that actually looks pretty cool. So you kind of want that like drifting off into the water a little bit. So I'll angle it down so it kind of sweeps off into the water. And that actually looks pretty good. So they're on that dirty ground. And then you have, you know, the lake meeting it at that point, basically right there. Now, I don't I don't know why I have my lake rotated like that. Don't know if that's because I needed to, like, catch the light.
Now this light is reflecting and getting us that nice, yeah, that nice reflection in the foreground. Now for whatever reason, this guy, if I were to check the camera back on and look at this thing, I think it's just because this light isn't tall enough. So it's really just a matter of like moving pieces around to shape out your environment. But I don't I don't like that. So I'm going to undo and really try and hone this back in. That's definitely the best version so far. So I'll create a landscape material and I wanna get this foreground looking correct. So I'll scale it up. move it down and we can keep scaling it because I want these guys to be able to sit on this thing something like that maybe And we could angle it. I think this guy might be a little too high in the background here. So I might try and fit it in. I might try and rotate this thing around. Bring it down and in a little bit closer. Something like that. There we go. Now whatever material is on our foreground here, it's really, really nice looking. So I just want to drop that on this new landscape we just created. That actually looks, that looks pretty good to me. It's all a matter of just shaping and moving this thing around until it looks right. And then we can go through here and change the seed of this until we get something that actually matches, looks correct. And you could honestly duplicate this scale it down move it up and have a second piece for this guy to sit on because that's really what I'm trying to do is just ground this second hut And you can actually go through here and change this to more of like a plateau. So you do the plateau level comes up to like there. So then it's sitting on top of this and you just put this under.
something like that. Cool. Yeah, that's actually that's not too bad. So let's put some lights in these guys. Yeah. Speedy Blue Seven, welcome, welcome to the stream. We're making a really cool environment, and uh, this is actually a contest. The submission delivery deadline is by the 6th, so you still got time. You can download the template on the PNY landing page in the description. This is the last week we're putting this stuff together. You know, I'm probably going to do the character um, throughout the week here because I don't have time to do that. I still need to photo scan myself. So we'll definitely need to do that. But let's go ahead and grab, um, let's make some lights. Whoa. <laughs> let's make some lights. And put them inside of these huts and point them up. And bring them inside here. Sit it just on the ground. And we'll take that light. You can see you can see that point light. We don't want to see it, so we'll turn the visibility to off in camera. And if we, let's see, if we do, um, well, let's change the color temperature because we're going for firelight. We're going for natural light. All this stuff is lit by fire. If you've played The Last of Us 2 and you've been to the island, then you know exactly what I'm going for. We're going for that natural warmth. Um, let's do, let's lock our render so we can move it. We can even zoom in. So like 1.3 times. And I'm just going to render this region right here so it renders faster. And let's take that light and turn up the power to like 300. And it looks like it's not doing much. So I'm going to cheat it. I'm going to open up that light. So like you're just getting light from the entire floorboard basically. And it looks like, you know, maybe there's a fire going inside of this place. I think that's kind of cool. We can also do, you know, something like uh, instead of it spawning from an area or a square, you can actually change it so it's a omni light. For some reason, that's not working. You should be able to change the uh, the shape of it. Details, area shape, yes. S we'll do um, a sphere. That's absolutely massive, so we'll scale it down. And we can just move it maybe inside here, and we'll do one over in here. And we'll take that up to like 500 each. Eric, yeah, agreed. The, the character's not done. That's just the template like placeholder guy. So maybe we scale up these spheres a little bit more oh my god that's the power of the sun definitely too intense so I almost feel like the the square was the way to go so I'm gonna undo back to the square that just felt better to me and I can even bring it off the floor just a little bit so you can kind of get a creepy underlit vibe going on inside and maybe you bring it up like that or something but I feel like firelight you know firelight definitely is coming from the ground unless you have hanging lanterns 
which I could see. So maybe we did more of a hanging lantern vibe and we had like a couple of these guys placed throughout like that, which to me feels pretty good. We'll back them off. Maybe something like that. They're coming from inside. And we're trying to bounce the light off the ceiling. The other example would be to point them down to the ground. And we raise these guys up. So you get a bit of more of an even light throughout the inside of this thing. But honestly, I like the other version when the, when the lights were pointed up. It's a bit more dynamic. And we can, again, change the intensity of those. So let's copy these and move them into this other area. This other building, this mid, mid ground building. I'm gonna zero out the orientation on that. That's super bright, super intense. And we can maybe have one more light going in this thing. Also, another thing is we can take this actual building and put the lights in the appropriate building. I think that's going to make this process a little easier. So that's going to be that guy. Boom. So now when we move the whole building, the lights will come with it. So we'll check, oop, yeah, we'll check camera back on. We'll hop into our scene camera. And we'll uncheck it and hop back in. Just kind of a reset there. That looks super cool. We got some light coming from the inside. So let's find this guy and we'll drop those lights in there. And we'll keep we'll keep going. So I'll grab two of them and I'll move those into this foreground hut. I think I can just go with one. Liam, dude, thank you for the super chat. I'm glad you enjoy the streams, man. They're really fun for me. So we, we can we can bring this up and you can adjust these lights however you want until you get the desired effect you're going for. That's kind of creepy. I like that. We can take the power up. What if we took the power up to, I don't know, 9,000? Yeah, way too intense. So this is not good here. This is, there's a lot of fireflies going on here um, that aren't going to help us. So we want to 
try and minimize that um, by not pointing lights at the ground. <laughs> Definitely don't want to do that. So we'll just keep it limited to the hut itself. This is feeling cool. I'm really digging this. Yeah, I mean, we could do lanterns. Certainly, we could take it to the next level. Do some lanterns, which is, yeah, definitely a possibility. It's all just a matter of time here. Again, the way I work, I try to work as general as possible. Um, and as large scale as possible. And then I work things in. Um, I work the detail in, right? So with these, with these huts, basically I'm lighting the huts. I'm getting the general feel of it. And then I'll, I'll go from there. I'll continue from there to make things uh, more detailed. Get that looking nice. Awesome, you get the lights reflecting off of the, the swampy lake, I dig that. And then we'll go ahead and copy these lights in here so we'll find this guy and actually you know what we can do I'm gonna try this I'm gonna try the transfer tool so since I have lights in this one this is the same model I want to just basically copy this and move it in place of that so I'm gonna control C control V we have a copy of this hut and then I'm gonna use the transfer tool let's do where would you be I already have it pinned up here you can hit shift C and type in transfer as well and find the transfer tool but I'm gonna click the transfer tool and I want it to transfer why are you grayed out mr. transfer tool all right it looks like it's working And I think it just worked. I think. Yep, it's in here. Um, I'm going to delete the hut we transferred it to. And then um, I think the lights just got no, the lights didn't get wigged out. I don't know why we're not seeing the lights in our render. Oh, that's because the model is hidden. There it is, way back there. Let's take these guys and bring the lights down onto the floor so we're getting the most light throughout this little hut. That's looking really nice. I dig that. And then finally we have this last guy. So I'm just gonna pop these three lights. Control drag to copy them into this big one here. I'm just gonna scale them up instead of making a fourth one.
That looks really nice. That's pretty freaking sweet. So again, that is from general to specific. So we did a general lighting setup on these huts here. That's awesome. That looks super cool. I think with fog, it's going to look even cooler. Um, we have our steam, our smoke cards in here in the back. So that's adding depth to the background. Um, I think I need to maybe work the color. The color of some of these huts, I think, might be a little bit too saturated. And then certainly adding fog to this whole thing is going to, you know, really spice this up. It's also going to slow down your render like crazy. So definitely be prepared for that. So I know another fog trick, um, one that actually saves a lot of time. I'm going to give this a shot. Let's hide the fog. And you know what? Let's set this up. We're going to parsec in to my work computer, again, to show you how easy this all is. I'm going to make a new C4D file. And I'm going to set up something simple for you guys. So basically, we have a card like this I'm gonna stand it up so it's uh, right on 90 okay I'm gonna make a new octane material you can do that by hitting shift C uh, type in octane diffuse material and you'll find uh, there it is down there we'll open it up and let's go ahead and apply it to this card let's render our scene awesome and we'll come in here, and this is a very simple setup. Basically, in the Opacity tab, I'm going to pop out here into a gradient. And it's as simple as that. So we can take this gradient and actually, let me do fall off. Do you think fall off will do it? No. Um, I think we, were, we had it with a with a gradient, an octane gradient perhaps. So it goes from one to the other. Nah, we had it with the original. That's it right there. We just want it the opposite. So we want the fog to be on the ground and then disappear as we get higher up into the sky. So 2DV, but then we need to orient the angle around so we'll do 180 and from here we can crunch this and we can make the fog not as bright and you can really take this down and make it subtle like this and this is a this is a way to cheat the fog so what I'm gonna do is let's see um, let's go ahead and we'll save as we'll go to our desktop we'll type this fast fog all right and then I'm gonna drop this into the VFX materials folder I'll bring up my second monitor. 
on Parsec. And I'll just drop this into VFX folder here. VFX materials in the root. And then I'll go, I'm going to disconnect from Parsec back on my work PC, my home, my home PC rather. And let's go ahead and grab that. VFX materials. I'll give it a moment here. There we go. I'm going to copy this over. And we can go ahead and open it up. Boom. So you guys can see, really, again, Parsec, how awesome Parsec is. Um, obviously, I could have done this here. But if for whatever reason I had files on that computer or I didn't have something installed on my home computer, but it, I do have it installed on the work computer, you guys will really get the idea. Um, super, super powerful. So let's go ahead and edit. Let's copy this. No, no, no. Let's copy the whole plane and we'll go back into our parallel dimensions project file. We'll paste and we'll see if this actually works for us. Um, let's push this thing back. Let's stand it up. And we should have, I don't know why I'm not seeing it here, but I should have a fog layer going. Let's just go ahead and really make sure we can see this fog layer. There it is. So we'll uncheck the camera, I'll hop out here, and we'll push this back right in here. I'm going to scale it way up and we'll stand it way up. So we're getting a lot of fireflies from those lights which is not ideal. It's going to take a long time to render to get those fireflies away. We can do a couple things. Um, first, you can go to Window. Or I'm sorry, you go to Octane, Octane Settings, and make sure your GI clamp is set to 1. If it is set to like a million, it's going to look like that. It's going to look insane. So if your GI clamp is set to 1, you get rid of, as you get rid of like the initial chunk of fireflies. I wouldn't go much further. I think 1 is about as far is you'd want to go. The second thing you could do is in the Octane camera tag, if I'm in here, you got to make sure where the check camera option is on. There's a highlight, uh, no, sorry, under the camera imager tab, you scroll down, and there's a hot pixel removal. If you bring that down, it's going to get rid of most of those fireflies. It's going to do a pretty good job of that. Um, the last thing you can do is make sure you have your spectral denoiser turned on. So it's denoising um, those little bits. And the more samples you throw at this thing, the faster it's going to go. But that fog is too thick. And this is another thing that's going to help. Let's just, you know, let's bring this down a little bit. It's a little bit much. So we'll take this down to something like that maybe. And we will bring this down. So you can see how that gets you a nice little fog layer going. And then I'll copy it again. Um, let's go into a top view. I want to control drag this card back behind this light we had set up to get us an even thicker set of fog. And I'll make sure it's scaled up. And that's going to be a much faster way to do fog here in your scene. We can even have some foreground fog so I could bring that card forward. 
basically right up to my character back in top view right in front of these huts right in front of that of that hut there that first one and we're gonna scale it way the heck down maybe that was too much what just happened Yeah, something like that and then we could you know take that and if the fog is too thick we just bring the card down because remember the top of the card is um, let's make that editable real quick so we can adjust the gizmo by hitting L and moving it the top of the card is completely transparent so we can have a nice like low-lying fog and if we actually crunch this down like this we can have a nice little like strip of fog that just hovers over the ground like that. Now you can really see um, its limitations here because it's just like a, a cutoff point. It's a 2D fog, we're faking it, right? So this will work for the background, I think, for up to, up to a certain amount. Um, but once it gets in the foreground, you can really tell it's like a veil. It's basically just a 2D veil, but again, super quick little uh, little trick there to get yourself some some foreground fog maybe some background fog more if we're being honest with ourselves um so maybe i'll take those fog cards um i'll make these all editable and maybe i'll just adjust them adjust them a little bit um we can make them all x-ray so we can kind of see through these cards And again, if you scale it down, you kind of just get that half like low lying fog layer, which can look really cool. So that's the big background one, it looks like. This one is the mid ground fog layer. Other way around. This guy is our mid ground fog, background fog, and foreground fog. So we'll take the mid ground and we'll crunch it down. So you have that nice like low-lying swampy fog layer that you know so you can see like the tops of these guys peeking out that's super cool looking i dig that a lot sweet yeah and you can come in here and definitely color correction is going to help a lot because we're going to darken this up and really make it look nice and shape this thing out. So I think now we're at a point where we can start adding some like tree stumps and stuff because this is looking pretty freaking sweet. Um, now we still have the sky to do as well and the volcano smoke. As far as the volcano smoke goes, uh, I don't know. We'll have to see. We'll have to see about that. But for the sky, I'm thinking about just doing like a basically a storm picture from Google um, and popping that into the background there basically just making it a background or even you could do it in After Effects too certainly possible let me let me take these uh, these lights all of our all of our hut lights I want to just make them a little bit brighter And you can actually make these hut lights, ooh, having them flicker a little bit would be nice. 
but that's um you know that's that's a different level definitely a different level um not quite sure how to do that i know espresso can certainly do it Awesome. Looking super cool. Very, very nice. I'm going to do one last little fog bit here. A little fog card cheat for the background. So I want to do a, a, di a different material. So I'm going to duplicate the fog card, um, the material itself. And I'm going to do... So black is foggy and... Or I'm sorry, black is completely transparent. So I want to copy this so it's just a strip of fog like that, right? So we'll copy the background fog and give it the new fog material. And I'll hop out of the camera just to confirm that it's working and I'll crunch it down, move it up. And yeah, you can see it's like a thin layer of fog here. And that actually might be what we do for the foreground. That way you won't see the actual uh, the gap. And I'm gonna come into our top view and let's move this back up to the mountain. So we have this like misty layer of fog right at the base of the mountain. And I want to get that right. So I'm going to uncheck check camera. And we'll come into something. Maybe it's like right, right there. And I'll take that fog layer down because I still want to see the steam that we did in the in the mountain. And maybe I'll try duplicating this control drag into our foreground because our foreground fog you have that line, that harsh line. And we'll call this foreground, we'll call this uh low lying fog background. And the foreground fog will just bring right down to the floor, basically. Crunch it down. Get it right onto the floor there. And we'll position it, yeah, just in front there. I think it might be a little too subtle. So we'll adjust the, the gradient just to come up a little bit. And there you can see, you got that low-lying foreground fog right there. We can bring this down. And you kind of hide the line there. You can crunch it down even more. And make it a little bit more subtle. So that's a easy and uh, fast way to do fog to cheat it just a little something you know I think that feels really good so how's everybody doing are you guys hanging in there are you doing all right we got people coming in by the minute um, super super awesome very exciting stream. I'm having a blast. I love when this stuff just comes together. It looks so nice. Ah, uh, yeah, absolutely amazing. Ooh, Weedum. Perfectly centered renders are not good renders. Looks too generic. My dude, um, I hear you. I hear you. So on that. Um, I mean, centered, centered style framing is a choice, a stylistic choice. 
I love it. I really do love centered framing. Um, I know what you mean by the generic render, though. I definitely am not a fan of, like, the generic render. <laughs> definitely not a fan of that. Um, and I, I, I hear you, you know. They all happen to be kind of center framed. I, I was definitely not going for that. Um, certainly was not trying to go for that look. But I do like, you know, in all of my photography, it is kind of that center framed vibe. So let me let me just show you, I'll give you an example. Um, so I do have a print store. Shameless plug, 50% off prints right now. Um, it's called noisegrainandlight.com. Free shipping over orders, uh, $100 orders, even international. But yeah, no, I mean, if you look at this horse, you know, we got some center frame action. We got some center frame on this dude. Um, we got center frame with my buddy Young. Center frame with the basketball. Um, I'm a fan, you know, center frame with my buddy Adam again with Shanghai. Same here. I always try to find something and, and frame it up to the center. You know, I really I really do enjoy that. And I'm not always going for that. Obviously, you know, this building is framed differently. This one's framed differently. But this fog foggy tree, like if I'm finding something like that, I'm going with that center frame. This is an example of a center frame, but it's off center because of this giant fence, you know. Um, center frame road. This one happens to be off center. But you got your tree, your center frame tree. I'm a big fan of it. Um, it's certainly not what I'm always doing, but like with this one here, you know, you got to find your subject and get that center frame action. It just helps kind of tie the whole thing together, in my opinion. Um, you know, this one here is a different, certainly a different kind of framing. Definitely center frame with the factory, uh, with my buddy Tom center frame here so I'm trying to find that little element I do enjoy it but I know what you mean man the generic render vibe is you know it's not the best vibe I get it I certainly understand but I'm hoping that you know when this thing is done and comes together it's it's not gonna feel generic it's gonna feel um, it's gonna feel special you know and it's gonna look look nice so another way to do fog actually guys is with a z-depth pass so you know, if I come in here like this, um, and we go to our render settings, Octane render settings, info passes, and we adjust this Z depth slider, you can actually use this as a fog layer. Um, inside of After Effects, you know, it's a really nice way to do that. And basically, you would take this and you know, set it to, you can do it a number of different ways. You use it as an alpha mat, a luma mat. Um, I feel like my distance is too crunched here. So I might have to just do this in like different little pieces. But it's certainly possible to do it this way. And that way you get rid of the fireflies that you're seeing in the background, which will plague a render. It really will. Um, so I might be doing it that way as well. Most definitely. Dude, yeah, the, the center frame generic FPS shooter poster. I, yeah, exactly. Exactly. <laughs> All right, so I'm going to parsec back into my work computer. And let's go to bridge. And let's see. Let's see what we can find here. So, We've placed all of our structural, struct, structural, man, structural, structural elements. We've placed all of them, right? So I pulled um, different like trees and whatnot that I had downloaded, that I have downloaded currently on my work computer. And we got some grass, but let me just go through and see what we have here. I'm gonna reference the my desktop. So we have a couple stumps. We're gonna want a few stump elements and we'll probably want a few uh, like, you know, burnt down dead trees. We're gonna want some of that going on. 
and we'll put those off into the background and scatter them about. So that's what we're going to focus on right now. So parsect into the work computer. Let's figure out what we have. Um, let's do, where are we? Favorites, 3D assets. Oh, we have mushrooms too. So yeah, I think we'll get some of these fallen trees. We'll get some of these stumps. Um, now these guys, these wooden branches, I think we can scatter around the foreground. Um, definitely, we'll definitely do that. I'm feeling that for sure. But let's go ahead and get um, a couple stumps placed. And then let's go ahead and get a couple of the trees in the background placed. Because again, we work from, um, from large scale to small scale. So the next thing up on the docket is the tree stumps. All right. So we'll do the tree stumps and the burnt down trees. So we'll parsec out of there. Boom. Back to the work computer. We know what we want. So let's grab, where are we, favorites, 3D assets. This is a good stump. This is a really good broken stump. So I'm not going to go for the 8K texture quite yet. I'm going to wait until I see it's too low poly. So I'll start with 4K. And I'll go for the level of detail number one. Um, oop, we want to make sure we're export settings, not download settings. Global export settings, 4K, level of detail number one. All right, so let's export that guy. It's going to come into our scene. We're going for stumps and trees. I like this fallen tree. Let's go ahead and export that guy. This dead tree is definitely one that we are going to need. Um, level of detail number one. We don't need to go super intense with it. How is this still? How are these still downloading? Here's another like stump setup. I like that. Let's go ahead and export that. This is another good stump. I oh, mean, man, we got so many good stumps, y'all. Stump town up in here. This is probably the best stump of them all. King stump. Let's do that. I like this guy, the mossy stump. Sweet. All right, so let's see what we can do. We got that stuff coming in. My big old head is blocking the materials coming in, but y'all got to trust they're, they're coming in. You can see it right here. They don't look good, but we're going to fix that. We're going to make sure they do. Uh, Eric, okay, you said you can do a volume pass in the image settings. Um, what do you mean, man? Let me know. I want to learn. <laughs> uh, if you are not part of the Discord server, um, it's the Create with Clint Discord server. Basically, everyone here who's trying to learn, got a whole server, you know, um, to make it easy on y'all. Go ahead and at me. Just send me a message on that server. Um, and let me know what you mean by that Z depth pass because I definitely need to find out the easiest and fastest way to do the fog and if you say there's a better way I'm all ears my dude all ears I'm gonna hide these fog cards for now um, because you know actually no I'm not gonna hide the fog cards I'm gonna just hide them from the viewport Man, it's looking, dude. I'm. It's looking good. It's looking good. I'm happy with this. All right, so let's go ahead and check the camera. Let's hop out. I'm gonna save a new iteration. It's been a minute. Version one L. And this is just, this is just because I'm curious. I want to see what this looks like without the color correction settings. 
much brighter. <laughs> That's the main thing. It's much brighter. I can't wait. I can't wait. I can't wait to color correct this thing, man. It's going to look so good. All right. I'm hopping out. And let's zoom in and adjust these stumpy stumps. So first, let's figure out what we have. Um, well, I'm going to put the fog cards in their folder and bring them down to geometry because we want to stay as organized as we can. I usually go back and organize this stuff when I'm done with the stream, but you know how it is. Boom. Let's let's separate this stuff out. We have a fallen tree asset right here. It looks tiny. We're gonna make it bigger. We got a stump. We got some friggin' stump town wood rot going. Okay. We got some more stumps. Um we got is that king stump? I think that's our king stump. And that is just another old stump. All right, so you can see they're much darker. So what I'm gonna do is go into these materials and make sure they're set up properly. So instead of universal GGX, I'm gonna do glossy octane. And you can see that kinda made things a little nicer. So let me just go down the line here and go glossy and octane and that brightens them up a little bit um, right off the bat I think it looks a little bit nicer and then we can adjust from there but we want our king stump to be somewhere here in the foreground in this little like swampy area right in here so it's too dark we'll have to adjust um, its color settings but we'll do that once we have it placed or you know what let's freaking do it right now because we're here and we can so let's go ahead and select that guy we'll go into the node editor and we have everything set up um, quixel bridge makes it super easy on us All right, so we want it to blend into the ground itself. So we'll just need to adjust the brightness and the gamma levels here. So just by tweaking the gamma, it already blends in. I think I can take the saturation down to 0.5 too. Yikes, uh, just kidding. Let's try like 0.85 maybe. And that kind of gets rid of the green that we're seeing in there um, maybe maybe we'll we'll go 0 0.9 with it because I think things could be a little green in the swamp you know it's possible so that seems like the adjustment to be honest with y'all like 0.61 on the on the gamma maybe we could do like 0 0.7 but really no 0 0.6 was the vibe I think that blends in really nicely so I'm going to do that across the board here. I'm going to select all of these different guys. I'm going to shift click. We'll go to the diffuse. We'll click in here to color correction and we'll batch do it by just going 0 0.6. And that's going to, you know, kind of bring in these guys. Maybe we'll do 0 0.65. And we can do specific ones if we find that they're too bright. I just want to blend them in with the dirt, really. I just want to make them feel muddy and gross. And we're kind of getting that by just dropping the gamma. They're going to be off in the background, too, so it's not going to be that big of a deal, but we should at least kind of hone it in. Um, so gamma 0.65, let's do 0.8 for that one. And the saturation 0.85.
cool. And then we want to desaturate this tree stump. We can scale these up too. We're definitely going to do that. Sweet. Um, and then lastly, I'll just grab this log here. And I'll adjust the saturation. That feels pretty good to me. Cool, so we have our stumps. So we'll hop back into camera mu camera mode. I'm gonna compare, let's do, or I'm sorry, options, uncheck the check camera, and let's hop back out, and we'll start placing these. So king stump, all right, if we look at our reference, we got king stump right here. It's, it's in the foreground, and it's, it's looking nice. It's right up in your face. So let's get that going right in here. Now it's hovering, right? So we don't, we definitely don't want that. So I want to get a good look at this thing and just render that little piece. Sweet. Yeah, that, that looks great. Another thing we can do is go into that texture and make it a little bit more um, shiny, right? Because it's in the mud, so it's wet. So we'll go in, and this is going to be, I believe, in our roughness. We'll adjust the roughness. So if I were to take, maybe, maybe I take off the specular. And that honestly kind of does it. Um, if I were to get in here, go back to 0.5, you can see, hopefully, that there's a sheen on the other side of this thing. And that's because it just has a, uh, a roughness channel and no specular. So it's specular is is actually pretty bright. So if I take off the roughness, actually it got better with the roughness. And it's just gonna be a bit more shiny. So I, I took off the specular channel, that's how I did that. So maybe I'd go on all of these guys, we go to specular, and we, let's see, what's the best way to do this? Because I don't want to delete it. Maybe I'll just go through each one and unhook each one. So we still have it there. We can grab it again if we need to. We'll hop back into the camera. We'll check the camera. Go 1.2 again. And maybe we make this tree bigger, you know? Maybe we, we make this stump a little larger. So I'm all for that. Let's let's give it a shot. Yeah, that looks awesome. I think that totally works. We can get a stump here on the left as well. Maybe this guy right here. And we'll place, we're gonna get the tree further back. That's, that's gonna have a place to go for sure. We're gonna get this guy in a nice, oh sorry, this tree. Yeah, this tree is gonna be looking good. But this stump here, you know, again, <clears throat> Again, on orientation, we want to orient this stump so that um, we it best describes its features, right? So we can scale it up. And push it down into the ground there. Something like that. And it seems a little bright. 
to me. So I'm going to come back in here and actually adjust its gamma, maybe 0.8 or gamma 1. What does that look like? Maybe we'll go 0.9 on that guy. And we'll rotate it. That looks awesome. I am a fan. Certainly. Back to the reference. Um, we have this guy back here, and we also have this pretty big tree right in the fort, right in like in its in its path. So, I want to find a place for this guy, this big fallen tree. I need to scale this up certainly, and we can push this into the background. So that's a bit too apparent. I think what I might want to do is actually have it be here and we'll flip it around and we'll just move it off to the side. Let's clear this guy out. And make sure this guy is actually completely in the ground. So I'm going to go uh, 1.2. And we'll just render this region here. And I'll take a close look to make sure it's actually doing its job. Perfect. That looks really nice. I still think our king stump can be larger. Maybe we take all of these huts right in here. As well as the ground plane they're on. And hopefully the lights move with it. Yep. And I just want to push it off to the right. A little bit. Just a little bit. Because I want to make a little bit more room for this stump here. Um, this guy can probably come off to the right. Maybe a little bit more in the foreground. Nah, I liked it where it was. And then I'll grab these sticks and maybe scale them up a little bit. I can't tell. Is that a... Looks like a 
a jacked up tree. Then we got this guy to put somewhere. We can put this one maybe like off over here. Maybe it's just next to oops, next to this hut back here. We scale it way back up. Again, finding the right orientation that best describes its shape. And let's zoom in to see what it looks like. We'll render the region. So there's a big hole on that side, so I'm going to have to flip it around something like this and push it down not a fan of that I don't like that too much so I'm gonna go ahead and bring it back into the foreground That's not bad. It feels a bit too light to me, so I'm going to take the gamma back to 1. Maybe even 1.2 and take the brightness down to 0 You just want to give this thing depth, you know? And then maybe we we go back on our gamma. And that's that feels pretty sweet to me. That feels really cool. Um I might crunch the space here between because I want to scoot this over a little bit more to make room for the stump just a bit so I'm gonna grab this hut as well as this guy and the land mass that they're both on and just scoot them over to make a bit more room and I'll scoot the stump over just a bit too this is all composition we're talking right now, is getting the right composition for your render. Add our fog in. Like this is really starting to take shape here. I am a fan. Loving it. Um, random idea. What if 
I took some lights. If I made a light, angled it down, negative 90, adjusted the color temperature to 4200, and I put it underneath the huts. I wonder if it would give me a cool look. As if there's a hole underneath this thing. And we'll make sure we don't want to see the light. Um, rather, we don't want to see the light source. So we'll turn it off from camera. But it looks like it's giving us like a really, really intense glare. So let's take it down, way down. Let's take it down to like 100. Or I'm sorry, 10. It looks interesting. Um, we can maybe take it down to five. And I'll turn off the fog for a second because it's taking a lot of uh, render juice. But that's interesting. You know, I'm not, uh, not too opposed to that. And I think it's just super subtle. So it's like shining through the floorboards almost. I'm going to copy that to the other huts to see if we can get a cool look. This one will do two of them. So I'll push that down. And scoot this one over. Yeah, it gives it a little something, and it actually gives it a little bit more warmth. I like that a lot. I'm going to keep moving this over. And you can adjust the intensity of those ones in the back if they're not giving you enough. But I like that, that's pretty subtle. And with the fog back on, I think it could actually look really, really cool. So that's with our fog cards that we created. And this is with the volumetric fog as well. War climb. Yeah, some candles and torches could look sweet. Certainly. Maybe the, uh, the main guy here has a torch or something think that could be cool so you just need to watch out for these fireflies with the fog I think it's mostly the fog if I turned off the the fog cards and the volumetric fog you're not really going to be seeing those fireflies oh you are a little bit here in the mud so maybe we go back in that in that layer and adjust its specularity so I can come back let's see here it's this guy We'll select our mid-ground, we'll find the material that makes it up. It's this mixed material. So there's something in this mixed material, um, probably the specularity, the, the, super height, uh, the super high specular detail that we're not really getting out of that. We can probably just uh, adjust it and knock that down a little bit. We'd have to make a copy of all of these different ones, but I can, I'll just do that later. I don't want to bother y'all with that. Um, next, let's add, I'm going to parsec back in to my work computer. All right, so I'm at my computer in downtown Los Angeles, sitting in the Corridor Studios. Um, and I want to find some tree assets. I've already pulled them, but I just want to take a look here. 
um, and show you guys which ones we want to pull. Um, we can do the small sticks later. But I'm looking for like this stuff, this dead tree. Yeah, okay. Here we go. These three, basically. These three trees, these four right there. We're going to, maybe even five. We're going to scatter with an octane scatter around um, our background. Cool, yeah, so we'll grab those. I'll parsec back out, boom. So now we know what we want. Let's go ahead and, all right, those, these are still downloading. I'm gonna have to stop these, I think. Things just got a little out of control, perhaps. Give it the old refresh. All right, so this dead tree. Yeah, we got this dead tree. Let's get this dead tree. It's a burnt one. We'll download that 8K, obviously, but we only need to export the, the 4K, maybe even the 2K. I'll go ahead and download that. So, Martial Arts, you say rotoscoping is super hard. Um, rotoscoping is tedious and it could be hard because it's tedious, but I actually enjoy me some rotoscoping, believe it or not, because it's a chance for me to focus on just one thing and zone out on one thing. Um, there's different methods with rotoscoping. Like you could use the roto brush specifically roto brush two is amazing. That's why I have after effects beta installed here, which you guys can download. If you go to the, uh, creative cloud, um, sweet little downloader and install at the, at the far left bottom there's a, there's a beta you can do after effects beta um or you can do it by hand masking which is the most tedious hand masking is certainly the most tedious you can do luma mats as well there's lots of different tricks for rotoscoping and again if we're talking general to specific with rotoscoping it's the same thing you start on frame zero you go to and, and i basically i go every 10 frames and roto every 10th frame and then i'll go to the i'll go to the in between the fifth frame and i'll roto those frames and sometimes i get lucky and you know uh frame two three and four are done i don't need to do a frame by frame so you start general and you get more specific more specific until you have you know you do just amount uh just the amount of work that you need to do all right So we have one, two, three. We want to download this one as four. And I think there was a fifth tree in here somewhere. It was probably a stump. We can get this one as five. So we're going to download these and we're going to use uh, Octane Scatter to scatter them around our background. Once this guy's done, we'll go for it. Juicy, um, I hope I said your name right. Do you listen to music or podcasts while doing Roto since it doesn't require as much thinking? Um, Honestly, dude, even when I'm rotoscoping, I like to focus pretty hard. <laughs> um, but yeah, I mean, I'm listening to music right now. I got my bone phones on. I'm listening to the ambient playlist. Um, so yeah, man, I'll listen to some ambient music while I'm going. Certainly, I'll try and listen to music as much as I can. <sighs> 
Happy Halloween to everybody who hasn't heard it from me yet. I am Joseph Seed today, if you cannot tell. That's, he's a guy from Far Cry. Um, all right, boom, there's our fifth one. Let's es export these guys, all 4K. I'm wondering, though, can we get away with 2K? Nah, let's just do it. Let's just freaking do it. BRB. I lied. I got some kombucha. Freaking love that stuff. <laughs> Freaking Jeffrey Dahmer's fashion consultant. That's pretty good. <laughs> Whew. All right, two and a half hours in, I'm feeling good. I think we're going to get these trees placed, and then I'd like to get a sky element going. Maybe place some sticks in the foreground, and I think we can call it. Oh, man, so good. Man, I just feel like... I feel like I'm healthier every day with this stuff. Ooh. Ginger. So good for you. All right, y'all. Let's keep going. Oh, man, we got some trees. Let's do the same thing we did before where we selected everything and we said glossy, octane, and they're going to blend just a little bit better. That's looking pretty good. Um, we got five trees. Let's go ahead and like open this up so we can actually see what's going on. Now the trick here is to make it look like everything is actually like, we don't want it to look like it's repeating. This stuff is repeating because this, this shape, this silhouette is going to get very noticeable very quick. So we have to be smart with how much we move this stuff around, okay? So here's what I'm going to do. I want to basically place these trees along this area here as well as this area here. And I'm going to do them separately, okay? So I'm going to start with this one which means we might have some trees blocking this guy here, but we'll figure it out. I don't want too many of them, that's for sure. And I know that we'll be able to um, see the trees a bit more clearly with the fog layers on. So I'm gonna turn on our fog cards in order to see those trees just a little bit more. And let's do, um, yeah, let's, let's go for it. So I'm going to make an octane scatter object here. You can find that by going to objects, octane scatter. It's right in there. Or hit shift C and octane scatter. Boom, right there. So the idea is that you have this octane scatter and it's asking, what do you want me to scatter? What objects do you want me to scatter? In this case, it'll be our trees. And where do you want me to scatter it? Across what surface? And that's the same with any scatter object you use, whether it's like a Cinema 4D, you know, object cloner or whatnot. Um, it's the same deal. So the first thing I do is I want to tell it where 
it should scatter the objects to or across. In this case, it is this little area here, which is uh, our lake. So we can literally just type in lake um, across the surface of, no, we can't type it in. That'd be sweet though. We have to drag and drop, boom. So it's gonna be scattering stuff across the lake. You can see here that we have all these little points and it's on the vertex of our lake. We don't want vertex, we want across the surface. So that will randomly scatter all these different little pieces across the surface of our lake. Now there's too many, definitely there's too many. I can see just by looking at these green dots. So I'm gonna take the countdown to 100, just a simple 100 trees scattered across our lake, okay? We can go to display and we can say they are boxes instead of lines, which that's not updating. Circles, well, uh, whatever, we'll go with line, we'll stick with line, <laughs> keep it simple. The idea is that we wanna take all five of these trees and we wanna make sure the gizmo is at the very bottom of these things because it's gonna, it'll spawn it. That's perfect, yep. That is a little low, so we wanna bring this one up. This one is, a little low as well we can bring this up too um, and you can hit s to snap to your object you have selected that's actually fine and that is fine so we'll grab those we'll put them in the octane scatter and you can see in our render we have trees coming out of the lake which looks super cool So you have some options on how these things are actually scattered around. Um, first, it's doing, um, it's scattering all these objects equally. So um, if we want to scatter one object more than another, we'll want to duplicate it in the actual, uh, in the subfolder here. So I actually want this tree, let's see if we can zoom in here. And we actually need to move our five original objects away. We just need to move them out here because they're going to be in our scene. We don't want that. We don't want to see them. So this guy here, I'll duplicate that. And this guy here, I'll duplicate that just holding control and dragging. And that's going to give us more of those than we'll see of these guys, you know, because we want more of the actual trees themselves than we do the stumps. So you can see the black lines are the taller trees. Now, one big thing that we need to do here is, let's take a look. Technically, we might have some trees going through our huts, but I don't, in this case, I think we're good. So what we can do, we need to randomly rotate all of these trees. Otherwise, they're going to look like obvious copies. We can also set the count up to like 200 to give it, uh, a little bit more something back there. So rotation, you know, you could do it all through here, but I found the easiest way for me is to do it with uh, the Cinema 4D modifiers. So we'll go into here, we'll grab a random modifier and we'll, or I'm sorry, it's an effector. And uh, we'll just drag and drop it into the effectors tab in the Octane Scatter object. So now what it's doing is it's moving all these pieces around. We're saying the position we want to randomly, um, you know, organize, randomly organize. We want to randomly scatter the, the position X, Y, and Z. We don't want them floating. So I'm going to take Y to zero, but this X and Z is totally fine. It's just moving them like around this surface. You can see all of our trees. Um, and then we want rotation. This is the big one. We want to rotate our trees so that they don't, they're not all lined up. So let me hop back in here and let's see if we can see this. You can see how our trees are basically kind of lined up in the same way. This little black piece, this black piece. 
So we want to organize that. We want to rotate that around. So we could give it a little bit of, you know, rotation on that axis. A little bit on that axis. So they're kind of tilting, you know, maybe 30 degrees on each. But really, it's this one here. Oh, sorry. Hold on. I've got these mixed up. Let's do this the right way first. All right, this is the one. So notice these two trees, how they look the same. If I set that to um, 360, they're going to be randomly um, spun around. Um, and they actually look the same there. So let me try 1080. And they still look the same. Let me try 180. I believe they look different now. Yeah, they look different now. And then I'll give it 30 degrees and 30 degrees. So eh, maybe maybe 15 and 15. So they're all kind of just randomly oriented like that. And we can also do scale. So I'll come in here to scale. And I just want to give it a little something. So it just breaks it up a little bit more. Um, uniform and absolute, we can say 0.5 maybe even one. So some of them are scaled up and some of them are scaled down. And maybe it's 0.8. We'll hop back into our camera. And it's too many trees, way too many trees. Um, so let's check the camera and hop out. And it's coming into our foreground here. We don't want that. So what we could do is just adjust the seed, maybe take the count down until we get something that looks right. So maybe we do 100. Maybe that was right, you know, the first time we did it. Versus 200. I'm just going to re-render here to make sure this is updating properly. And we still have trees up in our hut. So we don't we don't want that. So I'll set the count to 100 and I'm just going to adjust the seed until we get something that works. So the seed is set to 10,000. I'll just keep adjusting that. Maybe we'll do 70 trees. And let's bring our other fog layer in because it looks like there's too many, but I think with the other fog layer, it'll, they'll kind of be hidden. And going back to our reference, there's not too many trees here. There's a few. So maybe we take it to 50. And I think there's too many stumps. I think we need just, we could probably get rid of, of this guy at least. And it still looks too uniform. And I think I need a bit more 
of fog between this little layer here. So I'll use the fog card to really shape that. The, the foreground fog card. Yeah, that's one that, that we can use. So I'll control drag this back. And that feels better. That certainly feels better. Um, but I want to keep adjusting the seed because I don't like how there's just like four of the same thing here. And I'm also going to take the random and I'm going to go 1080 on the rotation, the random rotation. I'm just going to randomly throw it off in any direction. Um, and then we'll take the scatter. We'll take the seed to like two. And we'll keep going until we find something that works for us. And we'll render region across this bit here. So two isn't bad. But three is uh, three is pretty nice. I like that. So it's really just like trying to find the look. Now these guys are coming out from under the ground. Obviously four doesn't work. In five, we have a duplicate kind of a look here, which I'm not a fan of. So far, three has been the one. Ooh, eight. Eight could be a winner. I like eight. So they're coming, like they're too, you know, close to the foreground. We can obviously like find a different plane that these things can um, can sit in. 14, 15. Yeah, we'd probably be better off scattering them across something. Um, let's go ahead and let's try this. Let's duplicate the lake. Control. Yep. And then I'm going to hide it from everything. Except, or sorry, except for the viewport. And I'm going to just choke this up and push it back. So they're not going to be really in the way of our foreground. They're just going to kind of be in the background. And I'm going to say lake.1 is what we're scattering across. Scatter lake. So now we'll get more of our trees in the area where we want them. And I think we can get to something that we like a little bit faster. And this is just, you know, going through and finding that, that right look, you know. But I think you guys get the idea. I think that's starting to feel, uh, feel pretty nice here. And you could definitely take this fog card and duplicate it and push it back to keep giving you more depth on the the tree layers, you know, 
So that's really going to help us. get depth in those trees and you could certainly overdo the fog so just be careful but I am I'm feeling something like this guys I think this is this is looking good fantastic so the last thing I want to do is I want to find a sky that looks good for us that I can put into the background here. So I'm going to parsec back into my work computer in downtown LA. Um, and if you guys are just joining me here, um, parsec is the sponsor of today's stream. It's a remote desktop application and it's, it has basically zero latency, very low latency. Um, it gets you, two monitors you're able to do two monitors with parsec warp so you got your second monitor popping up here boom second screen and this will be over on my other screen here um, it also allows for tablet support so any like pressure sensitive um, tilt sensitive stuff I'm always on my tablet so they actually came out with uh, parsec warp which is a service that supports the tablet I freaking love it and it also has a perfect 444 color mode, which basically means that for every pixel on your monitor, you have a specific color. Um, and you can, you know, toggle that on here, preferred 444. You got your second screen. Um, you can use this to play video games. Uh, I'm going to be using this when I'm in Georgia and I'm, uh, you know, trying to get some renders out. And I just have my laptop. I can parsec into my home computer here and get a really nice look. Um, be able to use this whole freaking workstation from uh, wherever you're at. You can be at a coffee shop, it doesn't matter. But we've been doing it, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. It's helped me so much with uh, with quarantine because we've been parsecing into our work computers at Corridor um, at the beginning of all this, actually up until like last week, and have been able to get work done that way. So I'm in my actual Corridor computer right now, parsecked in, and I want to find some awesome uh some sky pictures that i think will will look good for our background so here's what i'm gonna do i am let's open this window up here let's do boom all right so this is where we're looking for our, for our swamps um Let's go ahead and type in like storm clouds. And we'll go tools, size, we'll go large and see what we can find here. So you want to find something like, I mean, this could be interesting, but that I believe, let's see if we can do in Google, we'll go settings, search settings. Um, uh, maybe the settings, advanced search for the Let's see, there's a size, image size. We can go, we can choose the size we want. So we can say eight megapixels for our storm clouds and we'll do an advanced search for that. And then we'll get these images here that are at least eight megapixels. So you wanna find something that looks freaking awesome. You know, like we wanna go for something like this. So it's definitely some storm cloud vibes with maybe like a little sun sunrise in the back okay so we can pull some of these and just figure out like what the heck works maybe this guy and technically you know we're ripping images here um, definitely don't use this for the wrong reasons. If you're gonna 
do something that is like uh, for commercial or whatever. Um, definitely need to get the correct rights for these, you know. So just be careful when you all doing this. Storm clouds. Ooh. Ooh. That is nice. All right, so here, in case this is a freaking crazy, um, <laughs> yeah, in case this is a crazy ad, I am gonna just download this on the other window just in case. Second screen. All right, let's see what happens. Well, this is a 15 second download. It's gonna take a minute, huh? So I think that's going to be the easiest way for me to do this is to actually have it um, with a with an image versus, you know, like a whole cloud volume system. Hey, it worked. Okay, desktop, boom. And I'll find like one more, one more image here that we can use. Um... Ooh, this could be interesting. We try this one. Cause I again I do want to have like a vibe where the sunlight kind of shines through and hits the mid-ground area. I think that could look really, really nice. So I'll try those two, maybe those three, and um, I'll put them in the correct folder here. VFX materials, I'll disconnect from Parsec, and I'm back into my home computer. And let's see. Let's go ahead and grab those. Um, fif <laughs> You can't get Parsec working for some reason on your network. Um, I mean, definitely reach out to, to the guys at Parsec. They're super, super easy to get in touch with. Um, they're very, very kind and see if they can't help you out. Um, if you message me on Discord, uh, the, there's a link to my Discord in the description below. If you go ahead and message me there, um, I can make sure that we find guys to help you out with that, okay? All right, so, yeah, let me grab these images here yeah there's those fireflies you've got to got to get those out of there somehow some way but let's go ahead and hide the fog it's all coming from the fog that's like that's the whole reason we're getting the fireflies all right and let's go ahead and grab those images we just pulled and copy them over All right, so the best way to do this might be with a background. So I'm gonna save a new iteration so I can always take account of, you know, all my different versions here. I can render this out. Man, this is freaking awesome. I'm I'm on a quadro card right now and I'm just super impressed with like I'm able to just go through this without any issues. I've only used 5 gigs of VRAM of the 24 gigs of VRAM available. Pretty incredible. Pretty pretty incredible. Heck, 
I'm going to throw another fog card into this background. Let's go background fog card. I want to see it in my viewport. I'm going to control drag this guy all the way back, all the way back. And I'll scale it way the heck up and just get some separation on these mountains here. That's nice. Awesome. All right. So let's see if we can get this background going. I'm going to make a background, which is a background, and see if this doesn't work. I could always do it with a card but let's let's just see if this works i'm gonna make an octane diffuse material i'm gonna hop in here and boom we'll throw an image texture in and it's going to be one of these let's start with let's start with this one i think it's a, a different look that i think could be really cool I'm gonna give it projection. Um, we'll do box projection, so the ratio of the image is maintained, and we'll give it a transform, so we're able to uh, adjust its size. And let's pop that onto the background and see what the heck we get. Um, nothing's coming through because our environment is shining through. So if I do octane settings and I scroll down, let me open up the alpha channel. Now we want the background to actually shine through and reflect into our foreground. So that's actually not, I don't think it's gonna work if we do it this way. So maybe we take the background away and we do it with a card. So let's make a plane and scale it way the heck up. Move it back, rotate it upright, holding shift to snap at the 90 degree increments, and we'll open it up. And I just want to check the aspect ratio. Oh, I want to check the aspect ratio of this image. Right here, because I want to maintain the aspect ratio. So it is 1919 by 1279. But hold on, we don't need to do that because we made it a box projection. So no worries. And we'll turn it around 180. Whoa. Maybe we do need mesh UV. Nineteen nineteen by twelve seventy nine, was that it? Nineteen yikes. Nineteen nineteen times one hundred. Twelve seventy nine. 1279 times 100. So that should be maintained. That looks like absolute butt. Absolute butt. We got those rings in there, which I have no idea why that's the case. 
Um, it looks like it needs, well, you know, maybe what we could do is actually just make a normal C4D material. Give it that image. Copy the path. Go into color. No, it's a uh, luminance. Luminance just makes it a see-through. Basically, just we see the image. And we'll go ahead and paste. Yikes. Grab that. Nope. We'll apply the new material. And hopefully, let's try and re-render the scene. It should shine through as just the normal image. All right. Interesting. Why is it just black? Maybe it needs the Ah, oh, the luminance should do the trick. Maybe because it's not octane. Um, but octane's going to make it an emissive. This should be really easy. I don't know why this isn't working. Now, does anyone know how to make this thing double-sided? Because um, this should be showing the image. Both sides are not. I wonder, no. Hmm. Oh, I know why. It's probably because it needs to be emitting like freaking a thousand. See, that just looks horrible though. Yeah, not having the best luck here with this technique. I feel like it'd be the way to go though. It's certainly like the way to go in theory. And it might just be something we have to do in After Effects. But we're getting some weird artifacts here. It's very dim. Uh, it's not working properly. I think the emission needs to be boosted. But that just looks horrible. That looks absolutely horrible. This might be one for another time. I have to figure this one out. We want to get something to like like this, you know, and the birds, the birds. I'm probably gonna do in After Effects. I actually filmed some birds against the sky, and I'll just you know luma mat them out, key them out, and pop them into my scene. It's probably the best way to go about it. 
Um, but man, like other than that, like I definitely need to get the sky. I need to get the birds. Um, I need to, the next biggest thing is my character model. I'm going to photo scan myself in like my camping gear basically and um, apply me to the character and have me walking towards this mountain in the background. I mean, no one's going to know it's me, but it'll be me, you know, it'll, it'll be pretty sweet. It'll be pretty sweet. So, you know, maybe actually here to give you guys an example of what we'll do, I'm going to open up After Effects and I'll show you what we can do here with the sky because it's as simple as here. Let's just turn on our fog. Um, let's turn back on the alpha. And we'll drop a sky in the background here and you'll see what I mean. So I'm gonna let this uh, render here. Nineteen twenty by eight ten, awesome. Yeah, an HDR image would probably work. Something from like uh HDRI Haven. They have the highest quality HDRIs. That'll probably be the best way to go. It's not going to help me too much on uh, render time, but hopefully I can get a super high res render out in like a day if I just freaking render all day long on this. But let's go ahead and file. We'll save this as a PNG. Um, we'll go versions. And we'll just call this, I don't know, Sky Alpha. And we'll hop into After Effects and I'll bring that in and we'll bring in those cloud images and see what we can do. I just wanna see if this will work, see how these look. So we'll bring those in and we'll bring in this version here. Look how far we've come. So we started like this and now <laughs> now we're here. Uh, now it's like this, you know? So we're certainly coming a long way. I'm loving it. Okay, so let's drop this in and Let's drop in some of these skies and see what we can do. Obviously, I gotta get my denoiser going. It's a little sparkly. But, I mean, this this could look pretty freaking sweet right here. We just have to blue it up, you know. A little bit of levels on that. Go with a little bit of blue. Uh, where are you at? Now also what we could do is uh is we could grab this render and sample this sky color drop it underneath and lower the opacity you know so something like that and we can duplicate that layer bring it on top and we can use extract. So if I bring this up, I can use extract to cut out all of the, the dark bits of the clouds and then soften it and cut back in. Something like that. So now it's over top of everything. Obviously we don't want it over our huts. So I'm going to just do a big old mask around, yikes, <laughs> do a big old mask around that and we'll just hit, we'll subtract it 
hit F for feather, feather the crap out of it. This is just get it, to get us an idea, a feeling. Um, I'll hit T and we'll go 35% opacity and 35% opacity there. So you have a little bit of like the foreground clouds coming in just a bit. Um, we can definitely take both of those. We'll parent both of them together. So now we move them together. So we have a little bit of like foreground cloud action. So that's certainly one way we can do this. If we invert that, um, let me try invert. We can get a different look, different kind of cloud look. Um, or we could simply let's do we can darken it up a little bit or something. So that could be a cool way to do the sky. Um, let's try that sunrise one. So this one here. Something like that could be pretty sweet. I'm a big fan of like the foreground being stormy and the background being, uh, you know, basically sunlight or sunset or something or the opposite where the foreground is sunny, but the background is, is dark. I like that a lot. So we could do something like that. And again, we could lower the opacity of it to bring in back some of the original sky. So just to give us some options here, I think this technique could work if it blended with the mountain a little bit better and if the fog layers could blend a little bit better, but I think that's not bad at all. Um, I mean, heck, we're here. We could try some, some color correction to see what this would look like if I just kind of gave it a bit of contrast. Maybe some darker shadows and a, a legit vignette. So I have a little vignette element that I use all the time, which I mean, you could, you can honestly do this in, in After Effects super easy. Just make a black solid control Y for that. Double click your ellipse tool and it'll perfectly do it. Um, we'll subtract it F for feather, feather the crap out of it. And that's too intense, but I'll change it to overlay. So the highlights will come through the vignette. And then you just take that down to like 50% and you get something, something pretty nice. Um, we'll take the adjustment layer, maybe bring the shadows. We'll go back up to zero on that. So it gets you something, something nice there. And yeah, I mean, you could do the same thing, actually, if you want to have a little bit of reflection in your foreground. You could take your storm clouds, control D to duplicate, W to flip, up, beside, down, holding shift to snap, come on, bud, holding shift to snap um, this into place, we'll bring it up top. And basically, if you, let's see, grab our foreground, duplicate it, solo it so we're only here, and then I'm going to do an extract as well. We'll extract the bright parts out. Feather that. Bring it down. And we just want, let's see, put that above our storm clouds. And you can kind of see how you get like some reflection on the ground here from these storm clouds. You could take it down to like 
that way you still maintain some of the original but I mean that that could look pretty sweet you know pretty cool yeah but I think from this point it's just you know getting the uh, the mountain to look a little bit more blended into the environment having clouds be around the mountain like this versus like this so we just need like you know some stuff coming out the top of the mountain some smoke and whatnot but I think this is looking pretty cool this is giving me an idea of where I'm gonna go for my final look um, so I'm gonna delete all that boom don't even care don't even care and the fireflies we definitely need to get rid of those so I reached out to someone here sent, saying to hit me up on discord I'm looking out for you I want that Z depth technique if you got it I am all ears but guys that's a uh, that's about it I mean I'm very 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 happy with what we have here I think it looks fantastic um, it's just gonna take maybe another day or so for me to really hone this in to bring it in um, I'll probably use an HDRI for the background I think it's probably the best bet probably do some HDRI Haven um, maybe scatter some sticks along the ground definitely change out the character that's certain um, and yeah you guys have the extension if you're submitting uh, in this render contest in the parallel dimensions render contest then you have until November 6th the link to submit is down below in the description um, yeah keep at it the top 20 winners I'm gonna choose on November 7th next week I choose all the winners I go through all the submissions and I choose the top 20 best ones I'm gonna put them together into a sweet audio visual montage so definitely you know bust out a render a super cool uh, render just like this you can download the template on the landing page it's the same link that you go to submit your uh, your render and join the contest we got blender links in there or blender files we got cinema 4d files we got an FBX so I'm, I'm expecting some cool renders from y'all and I've seen some cool ones so far too PNY is putting out an article on this whole process um, next week and they have some renders that I actually want to show you guys that have come in from the community that I think are super cool um, yeah the due date was November 2nd but it got pushed to November 6th so you guys have time you have until uh, I believe Friday um, there is a countdown timer on the PNY website so don't miss it definitely don't miss it I'm excited to see all of your guys' renders I'm excited to get rid of these fireflies in my render it's the freaking fog dude it's the fog killing me and yes it is Halloween so I'm Joseph Seed um, this Halloween I got my gray jacket right here it's no suit jacket but a little something Chris yay dude um, thanks for stopping by I'm glad it was your first stream I'm glad it's not the last stream I'll see you on discord buddy um, heck yeah good times y'all good times uh, I'm excited to see your render and again thanks to our buds over at Parsec for sponsoring this thing let me Parsec back in one more time just for the love of it it's so quick and so fast to hop in here and I'm literally on my computer at Corridor right now. Um, I'm at home, but I'm on my, com my Corridor computer through Parsec. Uh, it's a super fast, super easy remote desktop application. If you guys want to check out Parsec, um, it's actually free if you want to check it out. But they do have Parsec Warp, which gives you the extra added benefits like the dual screen, the second screen, which you can pop over to the right side. Um, it's got you with tablet support in a in a 444 color mode. Um, I think you save 20% if you sign up for a year. Parsec Warp, give it a shot. It's a blast. 
Um, you can play video games. You can do whatever the heck. You know, when you go away for Christmas or Thanksgiving, bring your laptop and parsec into your main desktop. I promise you, you won't be, uh, you won't be disappointed. It's a good time. But y'all, happy Halloween. Be safe. Have fun. Don't eat too much candy. Brush your teeth. All right. And uh, I'll see you guys on the Discord server, the Create with Clint Discord server. It's been a good time. So, Monte, thank you for moderating uh, the chat here. And thanks for moderating the server. Y'all are the best. I'll catch y'all very, very soon. I'm going to chill for the next uh, two minutes here. I'm going to take a little break. I'm going to come back, answer any questions y'all might have, and I'm going to sign off, okay? Um, so I will be back in two seconds. See you guys soon. And we're back. We're back. <sighs> All right. All right, where are y'all at? You all got questions? What kind of questions do you guys have? Let's see. Let's find out. All right. Can you add sound effects to your submission? You can do whatever the heck you want to your submission. I just wouldn't. Um, I'm going to cut your sound effects probably because not all of them are going to have sound effects and I'm going to add music to it. Um, it would be cool if they all had sound effects, but the plan is to have music. I'm not going to stop you from adding uh, sound effects. I think it could be cool. And it would add an extra element. So I might find a way to incorporate it. Christian, have I got around to playing some Death Stranding? Absolutely, dude. Um, I have yet to beat the game. I'm going to beat the game. My goal this year is to beat uh, Last of Us 2, which I did. It was amazing. Um, Ghost of Tsushima, which I'm, which I'm almost done with. I love it. And Death Stranding. So I'm definitely getting some Death Stranding vibes with this, uh, with this art. And there's your Ghost of Tsushima, you know, right in here. You, you definitely have a lot of these kind of buildings in that game. And um, it has Death Stranding vibes, too, at the same time. So it's like a combination of all three games that I've been playing, um, which I think is pretty sweet. Hmm. 
visual. Yes, dude. I'm so glad that you're glad that we have an extension because you put out some of the best stuff. I'm so glad that you're going to freaking crank on this thing and make it awesome. The top 20 is, I mean, dude, you win the render contests a whole lot. So I'd be surprised if you didn't make top 20, dude. All right, what else? What else kind of questions we got? Can you displace the mountain a bit? I want to add a little snow layer. Yeah, you can do it, man. You can do it just a little bit. A snow layer, I think, would be awesome. Yeah, as long as you don't change the overall like vibe of the mountain too much. And when I say vibe, I mean silhouette. As long as you don't mess with the silhouette of the mountain and change it completely, then you're fine. You know, it's totally cool to add a snow layer and texture it how you want. All right. Yep. Um, in today's corridor episode, there is a teaser for Birdemic. We're redoing the birds for Birdemic. I spent. Actually, let me show you. Um, so I'm parsecced in to my work computer. I'll show you this bird sim that I've been going Birdemic remake. Let me give you guys a little, little tease. Let's see. Renders. Where are we at? Where are we at? VFX renders. So this is a shot that I worked on. Oh yes, unknown file. Oh, cause I tried to open it. That's why. Two seconds. Let me, let me show you guys this birdemic nonsense. So I had to get, oh, no, actually, no, it's my V2. The V2 version is tracked a little bit better. So I had to rig up this Eagle, which I also download, downloaded from Turbo Squid, and Ren 3D track the scene, and I came up with a particle, uh, particle simulation, like a particle system with X particles, getting these birds flying around all right. Um, and then you guys saw, I think this one here which is a shot peter did which is absolutely incredible so good so i'm excited this is gonna be really stupid <laughs> really really dumb but uh, i hope you guys i hope you guys enjoy that it's gonna be a good time all right what else we got what else we got questions happy halloween to y'all uh, does Parsec need fast internet speeds? I only have 40 um, megabytes, and when I use Chrome Remote for C4D, use it at school, I get low frame rates. Um, ZSPC, definitely give it a shot. You know, you can download Parsec for free, see what you can see. And, uh, I mean, it, it works for me, most certainly. And, and yes, XP Flock, that is exactly what I'm using. Absolutely. But yeah, guys, I think that's about it. Um, yeah, Peter's freaking nuts. He's really great. He's a freaking beast. A blender beast. The dude is crazy. And he's so young, too. But all right, y'all, I think it's time. I'm going to sign off. Thanks for sticking into the end, guys. Happy Halloween. Stay safe. And I'll see you guys on the Discord server. November 6th, get your renders in. Because I'm going over all of them. And I'm choosing the top 20. I'm choosing the top three winners on November 7th, the day after. All right, guys. So be safe. See you guys later. Peace out. Good times. Happy Halloween. Don't get too scared. All right, bye.